All right, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing another upgrade to my Class C RV. This also applies to pretty much any motor home or travel trailer. What we're gonna be talking about today is adding a accessory propane port to your RV. Many of the newer travel trailers, motor homes, truck campers, almost anything you can imagine have an accessory port that looks something like this and what this is for is this is a quick connect port so you could plug in usually a gas grill you can use your onboard propane that way you don't have to carry extra either small or 20 pound tanks of propane with you to use a gas grill at your campsite all right so i have uh like most motorhomes an onboard larger propane tank. Uh, if you have a travel trailer or a truck camper, you'll probably just have a couple, one or two 20 pound tanks like they would, would normally look like what a grill has. These are a little bit bigger. They're meant to uh, withstand an accident, They're a little bit thicker, but basically it's the same setup. You have your tank, you have your valve, and under this plastic here is a regulator. And there's a couple things that may confuse you when it comes to working with propane. Again, if you don't feel comfortable doing something like this, it's probably better not to do it yourself, but it is relatively safe if you just take some basic precautions. So the first things you might hear talked about is high pressure propane and a low pressure propane appliance. And basically what the difference is, is when the propane comes out of the tank, it's high pressure. That's why it goes through a regulator to lower the pressure. And so like your gas grill, you'll notice the part that usually spins on to the tank has a little regulator on it that lowers the pressure to a much lower amount before it's you know sent to the burners in the grill. Well, everything in your RV, your refrigerator, your stove, your hot water tank, they run on low pressure propane. So the first thing out of the tank, it goes into the regulator, it regulates, lowers the pressure, and then it goes to the distribution system. Uh, most grills use low pressure propane also. So uh, there's a couple, some people will plumb something like this in for a high pressure line. Some people will plumb it in for a low pressure. Uh, if you don't know what you need, you probably need a low pressure line. In my case, uh, it would be nice to be able to plug a grill in on the side of the camper over here uh, under the awning. Uh, but the main reason I'm going to be installing this is to run my generator. So if you've seen in my older videos, I had uh, the same setup on my truck camper where I could power my Duromax XP2000EH dual fuel generator. And that little generator I just installed an easy start on my RV here on my Class C, and now I can power this whole RV with that small 2000 watt inverter generator. So I wanna be able to use the onboard propane so I don't have to carry gasoline with me or any other propane tanks. So I need to figure out where I wanna plumb this in. So that um, setup that I have is already set up for a low pressure line. It has a regulator in the line that controls the propane being allowed to go into the engine to burn, but it needs a low pressure propane source, so after the regulator. So I need to either hook this into the line somewhere after the regulator here, or somewhere here, or I could take it maybe off of an appliance inside. Each uh, motorhome, each RV is gonna be a little bit different about the best place to do it. But what I think I'm going to do in my case is right over here, this hose runs out of the regulator and it comes and makes a connection to solid line where it goes out to the rest of the camper. If I remove this thread on connection here, this is a rubber hose, I could put a T-fitting right here and plumb this in right here. So I'll have, I'll have easy access to it. I'll be able to just reach in here, plug a hose in, run my hose down through the bottom and either power my generator or a grill or whatever I want. So the first step is I'm going to make sure my propane is turned off and it is. 
And then it's not a bad idea to relieve the pressure in the line by either just going inside, and turning the stove on for just a second, just to lower the pressure. Um, let that little bit of residual propane just flow out of the line. And then we're gonna come and we're gonna break this connection loose right here. And we'll measure for what size fit-ins we need. Uh, in this case, I, I bought this. And as always, I will put links in the description to the parts that I use in the video. This has an on-off switch and uses standard size. This is actually considered a quarter inch uh, fitting. Okay, you can see that came off easy. So that's just a inverted, inverted flare fitting. So all I need to do is find something that on this side is basically the male and then the other side looks like this and then has a T coming off of it that will fit into our, obviously into our quarter inch. So that could be a little tricky to find something that has that exact setup. Might have to use a couple of pieces and put them together. So now I'll take a trip to the hardware store so I can figure out exactly what I need to buy. I'm also gonna pull this piece off because it gives me more options. See, this just is a standard pipe thread on that side to the inverted flare. So, you know, maybe I'll find something that the T has this on one side and that on the other. And, you know, that output. Just give me some more options when I'm shopping. Plus, this will let me, if I take this with me and take this with me, I can kind of work it out exactly what I need. Okay, well, I'm back from the hardware store. And before I went, I went ahead and uh, sanded off a little bit of rust on the tank. Put a fresh coat of Rust-Oleum gray paint on it. Figured now's a good time to do that. Just try to keep it decent shape so here's what i came back with took a little bit more separate pieces than i wanted to but you know each situation is different so if you remember this is the piece i took off here's the piece we want to put on i knew i needed to start with a t so this will thread right on to the hard line that was there this will thread into here We'll thread this back on to here, which will allow me to screw the hose back on. Uh, this can thread into here, this threads into here, then ultimately threads into this right here. So a lot of connections I need to make before we can put it back on. I will um, leave dimensions for these down in the description below. Uh, this is the only thing that I bought on Amazon here. Um, this is a little harder to find. You probably won't really find this locally in a hardware store, this quick connect propane fitting, but all this other stuff you can. So your situation will obviously be different than mine, depending on where you're trying to tee in. Uh, I'm going to be using some thread sealant on all these connections. I'm going to build this real quick and we'll get it installed here. So make sure we liberally coat pipe thread sealer. All right, so I've got this threaded on. I got that threaded in there. See, so now I can just put some sealer on here and get this put into place right here. Should be good, nice and tight. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just reconnect the gas line here. And 
And since this is a uh, flared fitting, you don't need any pipe sealer on that. Just our pipe thread fittings. All right. All right, so anytime you're working with gas or propane, I always recommend you check for leaks. So we'll repressurize the system, spray some gas leak detector. If you don't have that, you can just mix some water with a little tiny bit of dish soap and spray all your connections. And if you see any bubbles, obviously you have a little bit of a leak. This right here is what we want our fitting to look like. So as you can see, it'll be really easy just to reach up underneath, plug in our line, and then out here, which is under the awning, we'll have our use for our grill or our generator. And you can buy an extension line as long as you want to get it a little bit further away. But I wouldn't go over more than about 12 feet. All right, so how this works, this is actually on in line with the pipe, but to put the fitting on, you have to make sure it's turned off. Pop your hose in. Obviously, I don't have a hose connected right now. So this is just to show you. And then you turn this back on. And when you turn that back on, you can hear the gas flow. And that's how that works. All right, so here's my setup. Got my quick connect hose. It runs to the pulse regulator and all this pulse regulator does is allows propane only to flow to the generator when it is on demand. I also have this extension hose that I bought here. If I need to extend it, just has that fit in on that end, that, this one on the other. So I'll go ahead and set it up. Um, if you wanted to hook this to your grill, you just need to make sure that the grill is obviously a low pressure appliance. You'd want to install one of these on the inlet to the grill before the uh, valve to control the propane flow. And then, you know, you'd just bring this over from the camper, connect it directly to the grill like this. That's how you do that. So that's a quarter inch. So you just make sure your grill, you know, you buy whatever adapter you would need plumb that in. The only thing to keep in mind is if the grill has a built-in regulator like some of the small ones do, the ones that are meant to use the little one pound cylinders, that regulator may not work with this because in essence then you have two regulators. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up and try out my setup here and make sure everything runs all right. All right so I got my line, runs all the way over here to the generator. All right, just like that, I'm plugged in and running off my generator. Got the AC running. All right, so that pretty much wraps up that. Just another little easy DIY upgrade for your older RV or motorhome. Give you that convenience of having that propane quick connect port. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Please like the video, subscribe for more, and until next time, We'll see you later.